Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors, and today we're going to take a look at the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini and how to produce uh, resin-like miniatures on it. Um, before we get into this video, if you would, please click that like and subscribe button, and if you have time, leave a quick comment. It really does help me out with the YouTube algorithm. So if you like what I do here, if these videos are helpful for you, please consider helping me out and just do those three things. Uh, it really does help me with the YouTube algorithm. So that said, let's get started. Um, what are you going to need? Well, start with, you're going to need the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. And you do not need the more expensive version with the multicolor AMS setup. You can get by just fine with the $300 straight A1 Mini, like I'm showing here. You will also need a 0.2 millimeter nozzle for it. It's $12 on the Bamboo Lab store. Um, I tried printing miniatures on this with a 0.4 nozzle and it just didn't come out very well. It's not worth my time pursuing to try to develop a profile. So I'm just going to develop a miniatures profile for the A1 Mini uh, for the 0.2 millimeter nozzle. Bamboo Lab did an amazing job designing this printer. The nozzles swap out in under a minute, so there is no reason for me to try and develop something for a 0.4 nozzle when it's just not going to look right. The 0.2 does spectacular work as you're seeing here in these photos. Um, this barbarian here, uh, this is uh, this blows away anything I produced on my Ender 2 Pro, which has for the last couple of years been the gold standard for producing um, miniatures on an FDM printer. Uh, and this just there's no comparison. Bamboo Lab really did an amazing job here. Um, I'm going to show you a few more examples here. Uh, if you look at this knight, uh, the buckles on the backpack are fully detailed, including the little uh, pin in the center there. Um, just, just is incredible the detail I'm getting off of this thing. Uh, if you look at this. Uh, uh, a little bit different view here you can see the straps the buckles um if you look at this cleric here uh the scale mail is coming out perfectly uh the eyes are defined um uh, again I, I i cannot say enough good things about this printer so now that we've looked at these why don't we dive into what uh what the process was for me developing these uh, profiles and finally we'll go through the settings necessary to get these results all right before I get into um, the issues I encountered when I first started printing minis and what I did to create a custom profile and stuff I want to discuss filament for just a minute here um, I've tested a lot of filaments uh, over the last eight or ten years now I guess with um various printers and I continually test filaments as people recommend them and such and by far the two best filaments I found for consistent quality and what do I mean by that well you may be able to use a certain brand of filament and get it to print really well on one specific sculpt but it may not print great for all miniatures you try with it and what I test for is I've got about 12 miniatures that exhibit a whole range of features uh, from like this barbarian that has a raised sword up in the air so it's something very thin very tall that unless you use a temperature uh, separate tower with it it could create uh, issues with overheating I have other miniatures that have really sharp overhangs um, you get the idea things that present a major challenge for an FDM printer to print successfully and my criteria for a filament is that it print all of those miniatures well. And the only two filaments I've found so far that are capable of that are Hatchbox and more recently um, Sunlu's PLA Meta. And this meta, new Meta uh, PLA is just incredible for high speed printers. Um, if you are not running a Bamboo Lab printer, I do not recommend it. I have yet to get it to successfully print on one of my Creality machines. Um, I 
to be upfront, I have not had that much time to play with it. I've done some general testing and the results have been very not very encouraging, so I just haven't pursued it. I've been focusing on the bamboo lab printers with this new filament. Um, but I wanted to uh, point out the filaments I used for these tests and what my recommended filament is for my settings uh, before we get into this. So right here you're seeing uh, one of our barbarian miniatures from Fat Dragon Games printed. On the left is Sunloose PLA Meta. On the right is Hatchbox uh, Standard PLA. And the Sunloose PLA Meta does outperform the Hatchbox. Not by a lot, but when it comes to the layer lines, the Sunloose uh, layer lines do uh, kind of, I guess, merge better is the way to put it, but they are dis definitely less distinct. Um, move on to the next photo here. Um, this, what I've done if, is I went ahead and applied a flat gray primer to those two miniatures you just saw uh, to make it a more apples to apples comparison. And as you can see, the Sunlu meta on the left, uh, the layer lines like on the chest and uh, on the upper uh, raised leg and such, uh, they're far less noticeable while still retaining all of the detail. So um, for this test, I have used Sunlu Meta um, for all of these miniatures. And um, it really is, uh, if, you, if you have a Bamboo Labs machine and you're wanting to print miniatures, I really do strongly recommend getting it. Uh, a link is in the video description for this. Uh, it's an Amazon link. Um, okay, so let's get started here. This miniature you're seeing here is done with Bamboo Labs um, recommended settings, their stock profile for the 02 millimeter nozzle. Um, this is done with their own filament, Bamboo Labs Gray PLA, and with their filament settings. So I figured this was the optimal setup for their machine. And it looks good, but like if you look up at the sword, the sword starts having issues up towards the top. And there's some other quality issues with it as well, but um, there's definitely room for improvement, especially when you compare the same miniature from, uh, say, an Ender 2 Pro, which did a better job. And the Bamboo Labs A1 Mini is such an incredible machine and engineered so well, there is no way this thing should not be printing as well or better than an Ender 2 Pro. And so that's what I wanted to do was go through this and come up with um, some custom settings that would eliminate these issues and really produce as good a miniature as possible on the A1 Mini. So let me show you a different miniature here. This is a skeleton miniature. On the left is the Bamboo Studio profile for the 02 millimeter nozzle. These are both printed at 0 0.08 layer height, uh, and both are printed with Sunlu PLA Meta for absolute maximum quality. And the skeleton miniature came out gorgeous uh, with the Bamboo Studio profile, um, but on the lower hangs under the rib cage, I did notice some roughness. It had a little extra stringing, and just a little more jagged, didn't look quite as nice as what I'd gotten off of my Ender 2 Pro with the same miniature. So between this and the Barbarian, I decided I wanted to sit down and really try to develop a standard miniatures profile that will work with as many types of miniatures as possible. And that's what I'm going to go through with you here in this video and show you my settings. And then I'll also have the exported uh, files that you can import to your Bamboo Studio and have all of my settings as well. So on the left are the stock settings. On the right is my version 7 of my Fat Dragon Games profile where I got it to. Um, so there is a an improvement here. So it you know, I spent I started this in November and it's now the first week of January, so not quite two months to develop this, but um, uh, I've definitely learned a lot about Bamboo Studio, and I'm going to get into some idiosyncrasies here uh, in this video as well, some things that hopefully somebody in the audience can maybe answer for me. Um, just real quick, this uh, so nobody thinks this was just an issue uh, with Bamboo Studio not liking the uh, uh, Sunlu Meta PLA. Uh, this was the same uh, miniature, same everything, uh, the same G code and everything just run with uh, Hatchbox. And then again, it exhibits the same issues, the roughness around 
the rib cage and a few other places that um, were not present on the same file run or the same miniature run out on an Ender 2 Pro. Um, so a couple of quick things here before I show you my settings. Um, this is one of those idiosyncrasies I don't understand and I'm going to have to investigate this more and if anybody out there knows what's going on and can send me a message I would really appreciate it. The miniature on the bottom is print is sliced using the Bamboo Studios uh, classic wall generator. The one on the top is sliced using the Arachne wall generator in Bamboo, Bamboo Studio. Now Arachne should be producing tighter details and I'm specifically looking at the beard. Um, when I slice with Classic Editor, each of the strands of the beard was clearly visible when printed and looked nice and sharp and they lost all distinction when I sliced it using Arachne and it should be just the opposite. Arachne, because it varies the wall uh, thickness as required for tight details, was producing a lower quality print and I can't figure this out. So I've gone for now with my profile settings. I'm using the classic wall generator simply because even though it goes against all logic, it's producing better results. And it wasn't just on this miniature. It was on all of my test miniatures that I've done. Uh, the classic uh, wall generator did produce slightly better fine details. So until I figure out what's going on, this is what I'm going with. I want to I want to make sure you're getting the best possible uh, quality on your miniatures. But again, it's kind of confusing me, and I would love to get somebody's input on this that knows why the older wall generator uh, is doing better than the Arachne wall generator. So another thing is uh, temperature. You're going to look at my profile and see that the temperatures are set to 220 and think that's too high. Um, I've tried this lowering this in five degree increments and once i get close 210 it still works pretty good at 205 i start seeing um some issues and again it's it's nothing major but uh at 220 i'm getting absolute perfect quality with this sun lumetta and once i get below 210 there starts being a few issues so um that said i have a friend of mine i gave this profile to a couple of weeks ago He's been running it on his Bamboo A1 Mini, and he's been running it around 200. And I have another friend that I gave it to, and he's running it at 195, I think he said. And they've been getting great results with it. So I don't know why we're seeing we're all seeing these variations in what temperature works best. But uh, my profile is set for 220. If you want to try lowering that on your machine, go ahead but do it in five degree increments. Um, the thing with the Bamboo uh, Labs printers is because of the speed they print at, if you go too low on temperature, they will clog. So watch that. Uh, if you want to try a lower temperature, start with my 220, go to 215, 210, 205, but do it in five degree increments. And the minute you start seeing extrusion issues, stop and go to the next increment higher. Okay, this is the part everybody's been waiting for. Let's go through what I've changed in Bamboo Studio. Um, we're gonna start with the filament settings. Um, under filament, there is nothing changed here. I kept their stock settings for uh, the Bamboo Labs uh, PLA Basic. But uh, when we go over to cooling, I've changed uh, no cooling for the first four layers. I found that this helped with adhesion issues I was seeing with some, with the uh, PLA Meta. Uh, PLA Meta does not stick to um, the PEI uh, base plate quite as well as Hatchbox by not turning on the fan to layer four, which is still well within the thickness of the base, it eliminated that. So just be aware of that's why I did that. Um, I increased the minimum and maximum fan speed thresholds to what you see here, 95 and 100. Um, this does improve overhang quality. It also makes your machine a little louder, but I don't really care about that. I'm going after best results. So we'll move on here. Uh, going down to the main profile settings under quality, top surface I've changed to 0.2. Uh, that's just giving a little bit smoother surface for me. 
Uh, it's not blobbing up or anything uh, where it would have nozzle drag, but uh, that was just a minor, minor change. Uh, on down to the lower part of quality, uh, I've clicked on infill first. Um, we'll move on here. We're going to go to strength. Under strength, I did not change anything. I left all of those settings intact. But for my current testing for my V8 profile, I am doing uh, experimentation with uh, infill density and infill patterns, so that may change. But for right now, for my V7, this is uh, no changes were made here. Okay, moving on to speed. This is where the majority of changes were made. Uh, first layer, 16. Uh, first layer infill, 28. Outer wall, 60. Inner wall, 70. Sparse infill is 45, internal solid infill is 70, top surface 70. Both bridge and gap infill are set to 30, and travel speed is set to 600 millimeters per second. Uh, those are the only changes I've made at this point for the V7 profile. Like I said, I'm still making tweaks to this. Okay, so that's it for the settings. Now, uh, you can either input these manually into Bamboo Studio, uh, but I recommend downloading from the link in the video description simply because um, I'm not going to do a new video every time I update these settings. Um, I will just upload them to DriveThruRPG. So once you've downloaded those there, uh, in your account settings, just set that you want an email notification from me anytime I update the file. And that way, when I update these settings, which I will periodically, you'll get an email from DriveThru with a link to re-download the file and get the newer settings. So you won't have to worry about keeping track of anything. You'll just get an email notification when I update the file. So um, that's it for printing miniatures on the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. Uh, I am testing these now on the full-size A1, and we'll have a separate video on that with what I find. Uh, probably look for that in another week or two. Um, again, if you would, please click that like and subscribe button. And if you have time, leave a quick comment. Thank you.